What's going on, everyone? Jax here behind the wheel of the 2021 Lexus LS 500. Now, if you're just joining me for the driving portion of the video, let's get sort of the mechanicals out of the way. The Lexus LS 500 is powered by like a 400, 400 something horsepower twin turbo V6, making about 442 pound feet of torque. I'll put the actual numbers on the screen running through a 10 speed automatic, and this one is all wheel drive. So that's sort of your basic powertrain here. And one of the dings that people sort of have against this powertrain is that it's just not like obscenely impressive. You know, like some of the German cars have uh, available options in the powertrain department that are just like obnoxiously powerful. And this is what I would call reasonably powerful. But in day-to-day -day driving, I, I, let me tell you, this is plenty powerful enough. Like, you have to sort of consider, like, how much power do you need? And 440 pound-feet of torque is more than enough to get this big rig. It's almost 5,000 pounds up and moving at speed. I think zero to 60 is quoted like 4.6, 4.7 seconds. And in your daily luxury barge, like, how much more than that do you actually need? or want. As you can see, the driving position is pretty much perfect, which, you know, you would sort of expect out of a car in this like $100,000 category and the Lexus delivers. This seat is adjustable in many, many ways and I have it dialed in pretty much perfectly. I might wish the steering wheel came out just a touch farther, but to be honest with you, this is a pretty fantastic driving position in incredibly comfortable seats. They have massage functionality, which is great. I've got a messed up back and the lumbar support is pretty much awesome. Now we're turning onto the handling road here and I'm gonna leave the car in comfort. We're gonna talk a little bit about the difference in the Lexus's ride quality and sort of adaptive suspension systems. One of the things I really like about this car is the steering, actually. The steering has like a really perfect weight to it. It's accurate. For something of this size, it feels awesome. Now we're gonna go over this first section of kind of like quick undulations in comfort mode. And you're gonna see that like comfort mode is almost like obnoxiously soft. It's really trying to smooth everything out to give you this incredibly sort of floaty ride quality. And I think it goes a little overboard in that because here we go through the first big turn, it rolls pretty heavily. It's giving you this <clears throat> really kind of floaty ride quality, dare I say verging on wallowy, which I don't love. I think that Lexus kind of way overcompensates here on the soft side of the ride. And when you're approaching the big bump, like the Lexus absorbs this bump with no issues. But then again, like how soft do you really need to be? I've ridden in much firmer cars that take this bump with no problem. There it is. And I don't think the suspension needs to be this soft to handle an impact like that. Compared with something like the German sedans where the suspension is much sort of firmer and more controlled right out the box. This one is very soft. This car has the adaptive air suspension, which can raise and lower the car as well, which is pretty cool. But I have found that the best suspension setup, if you want it to have a little bit more of that Germanic feel, is not Sport, it's Sport Plus. Honestly, Sport Plus in this car is plenty comfortable still, like even when you have it dialed into like what they consider the maximum. Now, the positive of that is that I think that's sort of appropriate for this car's intended purpose. If you want to be on the interstate and you want it to be as smooth and comfortable as possible, then you could put it in comfort mode, whatever. But if you're driving around roads like kind of out here in the semi country around where I live outside of Atlanta, and you want it to have just a little bit more of that tightness in the suspension, I would just go straight to Sport Plus. Um, it, it feels much more controlled. And so I like that the Lexus has that. And you know, if you're being honest with yourself, how much more control do you really need? Do you really want a car like this having like a, a brittle and firm ride? I think that Sport Plus being kind of 
the, we'll call it the German standard mode or whatever, is, is kind of right, it, it makes sense. Like I could put comfort mode on when I'm on vacation, driving hours on end, but then I can put it in sport plus as I'm kind of going through my day-to-day -day commute. Another thing that they really nailed with this car is the sort of throttle calibration. The gas pedal feels really good. It, it really works in conjunction with that 10-speed automatic. The 10-speed, obviously in a luxury kind of flagship, is tuned to be as invisible and unobtrusive as possible, and it does a good job with that. Um, and it doesn't really crack off like upshifts and downshifts in Sport Plus. It's just more responsive, more attentive to your sporting needs. And I think they did a really good job here. But the brake pedal is not quite as consistently good. You have this really nice steering weight and feel. You have a really nice throttle pedal working in conjunction with the 10 speed. But then when you come to a stop, like right now in a slow speed stop, it's hard to come to a complete stop smoothly. And that's kind of annoying. Now, it's not as egregious as it is in some other Toyota Alexis products. Alexis, did I kind of say Alexis? Toyota Alexis products? But it still doesn't seem quite refined enough for a $100,000 luxury barge. Don't get me wrong, it's not a deal breaker. I wouldn't be like, well, I'm not buying this car thanks to that. You would definitely get used to it over time. I just think that the calibration could be kind of tightened up a little bit, maybe a little firmer pedal, a little smoother stop. Now, one thing you notice when you're driving this car, it has a very, a very large and clear heads up display, and it has literally every safety system that Lexus could throw at it. And I actually really like the way that the safety systems operate in this car, and it has something that I haven't seen in another car. It has front cross traffic alert. It gives you a sort of yellow orange arrow indicating the direction of the traffic and an audible alert if you let off the brake while you are at a sort of cross junction t junction whatever you want to call it it sort of can be annoying from time to time because you're like i know what i'm doing i'm just moving forward but i do think it's kind of nice to have that background sort of safety system watching your back or side as the case may be to make sure that you don't pull out into traffic on a, you know, without paying attention. I mean, you know how people are these days, always on their phones or devices when they shouldn't be. And that sort of prevents one of those, one of those types of accidents. Now on that notion, I don't think I mentioned this in the full review, which by the way, if you haven't seen that, go check that out for a lot more details about the interior and the powertrain and all that. Um, weirdly, one of the things this car lacks is a really dedicated spot for your phone. I mean, this is a luxury flagship. I'm assuming that whoever's driving this car has the nicest iPhone available, and there's seemingly nowhere to put it or charge it. I mean, you have charge cables, you have ports, but you don't have like a wireless charging thing to put the phone in. It's a curious oversight in a car that costs $100,000. Again, not a deal breaker, just sort of a weird quirk as Doug DeMuro would say. I like how big and clear that head up display is. However, if I had a sort of negative about some of the gauges and displays in this car is that they're really kind of boring and pedestrian looking. They just don't have a lot of style to them. The gauge display in front of the steering wheel especially is just really kind of dull. It's just a big circle and it doesn't feel like they're using that real estate as well as they could be. Now I'm turning onto the handling road again and I'm going to dial this thing into Sport Plus and let's see how things change a little bit in Sport Plus mode. So we're coming up to this first washboard section and let's see if the car maintains a better level of control. Yeah, it's noticeably firmer, and those secondary and tertiary motions, like I like to say, are not present. Going around the first corner here, I will complain that the suspension is firmer, but there still seems to be quite a bit of body roll. I know this is an enormous sedan, but I would like to see maybe a little bit more aggressive anti-roll bars or something on this vehicle to kind of mitigate that roll. But you're getting a little bit more road texture, not in an unpleasant way, in sort of a way that makes sense. And I'm okay with that, honestly. Watch this, we're gonna hit the first, the big bump here, and it's not even gonna upset the car at all. In fact, that's a much more reasonable reaction to the big bump, I think. Yeah, Sport Plus feels just way more dialed in. You can hustle this thing around in Sport Plus and not feel like 
it's working against you. So when you're driving in Sport Plus, I would say the Lexus LS doesn't shrink around you, but it definitely is more manageable. Like I still have it in Sport Plus right now, and it just feels more responsive. The steering is a little quicker off-center. In fact, it's really nice off-center, and it just feels like a more performance-capable machine. I mean, you are driving a big sedan that has over 400 horsepower, 440 pound-feet of torque, and so it, it can move. I mean, under five seconds to 60 is no slouch, and Sport Plus feels more in line with what the car could potentially do. And I'll kind of end with this. The Lexus LS is a flawed vehicle. And if you watch my other kind of full in-depth review of this car, I, I make no bones about that. But it is incredibly smooth, incredibly comfortable. This interior, go watch that video for more interior footage. This interior is fantastic. If you sort of ignore the, the foibles of the technology here and there, the interior materials and quality are 100% top notch, great interior. And the sound system too, you got speakers up here, which is just super fun. And it sounds incredible. And so you have this really capable, comfortable, and expectedly reliable luxury cruiser that rewards you with all of the kind of tactile hedonistic delights of a luxury flagship. And I think it looks pretty good too. Honestly, from the outside, I think the Lexus LS is one of the best looking Lexus products. And when you think about it and you think about how long this car will likely last, you think about the dealership experience, you think that this technology, while not as insanely impressive as some of the German rivals, is been around in Toyota and Lexus products for a while. So there is a sort of usability and reliability to it that's expected, and I think fairly so. Hold on, let's punch it in Sport Plus just so you can get an idea. There you go, Lexus, there you go. It even pipes in some really pleasing engine noise. Like, I, I don't mind that engine noise at all. I'm sure it's like, you know, 50% synthetic, but like, that sounds pretty good. And it's satisfying, and it pops off those upshifts, not quite with the, uh, the fanfare of something like the, uh, the RCF, you know, or uh, the LC500, but it's exciting enough to put a smile on your face. Anyway, if, you know, the channel was doing well and I wanted to spoil myself and I wanted to buy a luxury flagship, I am far too middle class and practical to buy one of the Germans outright. I would probably want to buy a used car. And if I'm gonna buy any flagship at all used, it's probably gonna be this one. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you just joined me for the drive, I think I might separate more of these drive parts of the reviews out so that they're just more digestible, maybe a little bit uh, shorter, more targeted, more focused. I don't know. Let me know if you like this format, if you thought it was helpful. If you're thinking about getting an LS and you wanna know more about the way it drives and handles. Um, oh, new Corvette. God, I love the new Corvette. I'm such a Corvette sucker. I love the new Corvette. That new Z06, oh my God goodness. Sorry, Lexus. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'll get back to the Lexus. But let me know if you like this format um, and I'll keep doing it. We'll call it Behind the Wheel or something like that's actually not a bad title. We should call it Behind the Wheel. I just made that up. Behind the Wheel with Jax and his stupid announcer voice. Anyway, I hope you tune in again. Thanks for being here. As always, ride safe, definitely drive safe, and I will catch you in the next video. All right? Peace. Not to mention this dappled sunlight is gonna give one of you a seizure and I don't want it to do that. Thanks for the turn signal there, you piece of crap. Honestly, wasn't even driving a BMW. Well, maybe if you turn your turn signal on, people would know that you were turning. You freaking idiot. You don't have a signal on, you moron. Honestly.